Hey guys, it's Hexer18. How's it going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you part two of the Windows XP uh, backdoor hacks that I've been showing earlier in part one. I showed you how you can replace the Seth file for the sticky keys to open a command prompt. Now, in this one, I'm going to be showing you another trick that's just as similar, but we're using the screen saver instead. So, um, but I want to show you first, some of you guys were asking me questions, you were like, uh, well, that still does not give you system or admin rights or something. From the previous video, part one, I'm going to show you that real quick, actually. It does give you system, which is a super user or a system administrator. It's even higher uh, privileges than an administrator. So, if you did what you did in the part one, if you followed that video, just hit the um the uh sticky keys and it should open this and there you have it i'm already see i'm system and that's proof right there that i am system for this this is higher admin uh privileges than in the administrator um so if some of you aren't getting this miss or getting this uh the who am command is not working you're going to need to download a um a service pack 2 um support administrate uh, administrative tools there's like a tool package out there for a who I, who am I download from a Microsoft site but um, also you could also run explore.exe and you can uh, it'll give you an image of the the, the screen right here so uh, it says right here that you're a system and you can do whatever you want add users delete users anything it, you have the highest privileges and um, do not however do not you don't want a hacker to get access to the system because that is the highest privileges like I said um, anyways I'm gonna go ahead and um, get a uh, red test kill explore exe whoops something didn't go right um, I pro oh here we go task kill dash f dash i and then the name of it explore dot exe there we go sorry about that forgot my command um, anyways um, going back to what we were doing before for this tutorial part two I'm sorry I'm trying to get back on topic here you want to log in uh, as the uh, administrator and then um, what you want to do is go to my computer go into the Windows System 32 and you want to look for a login or log on sorry log on uh, dot SCR and that would be your log the the screensaver that comes up the default windows so um, the prevent it is not using the the default logon that would be one way or just completely disabling a screensaver completely that would be a, a great way if you guys are still using the windows xp so um... Let's see here there we go right here as you can see I replaced it just like I did with the Ceph file I just changed I just made a copy of command prompt cmd.exe which is at the top and um, I just renamed it as logon.scr and uh, that I made a backup though always make your backups of your files do not delete them uh, back up that screensaver file the legitimate file and it's right there okay now uh, you can test this in many other ways you can test it by just running it in here and it should give you a command prompt like that also you could just do a properties screensaver tab and it's gonna just automatically open up like that to preview it see it's gonna come up like that I'm not sure why it comes up twice it does that sometimes and then uh, usually when um, people have their screensavers uh, they sometimes have the password protect on resume so when they shake the mouse and ask for a password this bypasses that now the only thing about doing this method is um, that it, it just it, it just um, it's not gonna give you that um, the system 
uh, privileges like the other one did the sticky keys that's why I like the sticky keys method because you're gonna get system the uh, the screensaver is only gonna give you uh, the administrator account that it's still good I mean or whoever is sorry whoever's account that you're logged into or that is always logged into so whoever's logged in and then the screensaver kicks in and then if you shake the mouse and it shows the password or whatever or it says that you need a password it's going to give you that command prompt instead you see what i mean so um i mean i don't want to just sit here and uh just uh sit there and wait for like five or um, five minutes or one minute even just to show you this but that's exactly how it works um for this tutorial i just wanted to show you that one in the next video, I'm probably going to show you guys how to uh, make a backdoor with maybe Netcat. That might be a good example. Um, you could also use Opcrack and um, some offline uh, NT password recoveries. But the thing about those is that you have to rely on weak passwords. If someone's using a really strong password with like capital letters, numbers, symbols, stuff like that, you're not going to get it. Most likely you will not get it because it's basically like a dictionary attack kind of or a hash dump of passwords that have already been cracked um, or been captured So uh, from the same files. So um, that's how that works. Um, I, I've actually ran into actually with Opcrack with me and uh, a colleague actually of mine we were trying uh, we were testing it out on our passwords and trying to find out what our passwords are secure or not you know if we can make them stronger and we made our passwords strong enough to where the, it's not crackable with that kind of stuff with the op crack and everything it still is a powerful tool it does blow my mind what that program can do op crack is a nice uh, program there's tons of tutorials out there for that op crack program or uh, the use of that on the ISO but um, I just wanted to show you guys this video something quick uh, try to make it as quick as possible um, leave me your comments send me your messages thanks guys talk to you guys later bye